And now for the exciting conclusion of the Were Rats Cave. So I went through and started like uh, giving them back all their um, treasures of weaponry they found along the way. So I'm going to do a couple of adjustments. So I'm going to kind of show you what uh, what I came up with here. Mr. Timmons, he actually picked up a longsword. Why does that look so weird? Let's move this up. Maybe I can go down and up with this thing and kind of reset it. Boom. Let's go back up. Uh, Timmons, boom. Ah, it's all scribbly looking. That's not good. What's that? Okay. He has a... Uh, where would it go? Why is it up here? I don't get it. Hmm. Maybe I have to reset his character sheet. That's okay. Let's go back to the actual Roll20 screen and share. And um, maybe I'll close the screen and restart it. It hiccuped, obviously. That's going to happen sometimes, right, friends? So I go here, let's open Timmons. Uh, he has a long sword plus one. I'm just gonna tell you what's going on because you need to, uh, since it's a long sword and he is a little wee man. Oh, that's working, okay. I, I'm gonna let him use it as a two-handed sword for the uh, halfling. So the reason why I'm doing that is the short sword has a minus one. This makes it zero, but then he gets a strength bonus added. So strength is plus one. It's a plus one sword because I'm a plus two. Not only to hit, but also uh, a plus two in damage. So it's 1d6 plus two. Okay. So he's going to be very happy with that. And I'll rearrange this some other time. But um, that's his kind of his gear he got. They got a bunch of other stuff too. And just kind of letting you know, um, uh, ITAS is going to carry the bulk of it because ITAS is, let's see what she's got on her. She's going to have. Once again, the Potion of Invisibility and the Ring of Protection, which is actually going to boost her arm cost to 12. Um, once again, uh, the uh, she's picking all her darts up as it goes. That's just declared it's going to keep that way. She did burn her sleep spell, so she's done with that, right? So um, we're down to here with that mess, okay? Then uh, let's take a look here. We are going to, uh, for my other character, I don't think anything else happened with anybody else. So we're going to uh, just go ahead and jump into the game where we left off, okay? This is our last session, and I'm going to give you a, you know, a little how, 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 it, how it worked for me kind of thing at the end. So let's get this up and rocking and rolling, all right? So the parry itself, after doing all this amazing devastation to what appears to be the, uh, the Rat King thing, God here, they're gonna, um, he's still in rat form. He's, they're gonna cleave his head off. And this is their proof that they have extinguished the problem. Smart idea, right? They also got a couple of things like cure, um, what was the other thing they got? A cure, uh, lycanthropy or a cure disease, which is really nice because they'll need it. Um, protection from chaos, wizard lock, and a bag of holding. So uh, these things will all be, uh, these are scrolls. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, this is gonna be fun. It's a, they're taking the Rat King's journal as well. Hey, right, we got proof that somebody else is writing. Considering Timmons can't even write, probably. I don't know. But Tim is actually he's he got twelve. He's pretty smart. So I mean, it's gonna be interesting. So they're gonna collect all this other stuff too. So this is going to be coming with them on their journey on the way out, right? Uh, the only problem is that obviously I see the map, so I know what's left. So I'm, you know, right now, you know, they're not gonna they're gonna go the one direction they haven't been. Okay. So once again, I'm gonna blow this thing up a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. Because there's like maybe two rooms left in this whole thing. So Timmons takes the lead. Oh, do, do, do. He's going to come this way. And obviously Stanwick's going to be second. Itaz is back here. And then you have uh, Ellis Punky over here. So as they go through, they're going to go this way because that's the only way they haven't been, right? Uh, Timmons, once again, he's going to stealthily check up on this, what appears to be a rust monster, right? So we're going into chamber 15, which is down here. Oh, wait, go back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too far, too far. Okay, so so 15 is going to be, oh, I just did it again. Oh my God, I'm embarrassing myself in front of the whole universe. Ooh. So yeah, um, so this thing's gonna start cutting this armadillo-like creature with long antennas and a beak appears to be actually eating away at the metal and it's starting to come to, to you. So if the wandering monster 
drawing to the player's characters that enter the chamber by their metal gear. We'll attempt to eat the equipment of most metal clad party members. So this is gonna stink, right? Because the only person that actually has something, uh, well, that's not true, uh, is the magic user with the staff and has an armor class of 16. So it's gonna be a little challenging. So as they come up, uh, Timmons will walk in there. He's got his brand new rust, brand new sword. I had to ruin it. <laughs> so, so Timmons sees this thing. Obviously, I'm going to drop him. I'm going to take this one and put it here. He sees Timmons and approaches Timmons. Stanwick's here. They're all kind of looking at this thing. I test here. The problem with the rust monster, if I correctly remember, they do smell the metal. So they're going to be coming, coming for the metal, right? So Timmons will probably, he, uh, looking at his character sheet real quick, uh, it's going to be bad news for Timmons because uh, Timmons has, let's see, everything is short sword, short bow, dagger, back, nothing that's going to be used that's of wood. This is where it's nice to have a club because you're going to be in trouble, right? So he is going to come up and try to strike it, right? I, I, I know I'm rolling this because... It's gonna end badly. He has his brand new sword. He feels very proud of it. Strike hit. Sorry, I hit it twice. Should have hit twice. So he tries to hit the thing, and when he does, that's about uh, sort of a miss. This thing is going to uh, clearly um, strike back at him. So I'm not gonna show everybody's character sheet as this takes place. The only person that's actually got somewhat of a defense would be Itas with her staff. Um, so if this monster strikes back, the metal has to make a saving throw, or it, it gets destroyed because the monster will be attacking. This will be a one-way battle. This is not good. Let me see, a three-hit dice monster? Doesn't have any. You see three? Ah, oh, I don't have the thing. Oh, I, I assume with that many hit points, it's probably a three-hit dice, easy, right? Oh yeah, it's even more than that. Let's make it four. Okay, so it's a four hit dice monster. Let's play four hit dice. And so, uh, Tim is your trouble. Let's see if it attacks. If it does, it hits you. It's it's gonna latch on. Yep. It's going to go ahead and grab onto your sword and try to start to chew it. Timmons, you're going to make a saving throw for your weapon at this point because you are in trouble. This thing has latched onto your sword. It's got its little antennas touching it its beak it's going to start chewing on it so you got to take a saving throw and let's we'll see or not whether you could do it a saving throw is a dry one yes success so when the thing tries to latch onto his sword as he swings to hit it he he turns right pulls it away and then it clues into him this thing's going to eat metal so he's going to shout to everybody else back up back up back up so because they're all kind of like uh worried about what's going to happen because this thing is obviously going to start pursuing them um so so let's go back to our uh our layout right so the rust monster is going to start approaching at this point timmons can be running back everybody's running back uh i test that's you're going to move up to the front with your staff because you are the only one that's going to be able to to strike and hit this thing the other looking at what else we have i think um my other characters have to start thinking about setting something on fire to get this thing away from them uh, so I'm going to have uh, the other characters are going to take a round, right, at this case, to put away their weapons and start striking some torches because I think they're in trouble, right? So, uh, so yeah, that sounds about as fun as fun can be. So we're going to make uh, Itaz. She's going to do her bit with the staff. She takes a big old swing and she comes down hard. Oh, look at you. Hi, Taz. Step it up to do your job. Nice, young lady. Nice. So this thing has a whole lot of hit points. 19. An armor class is 16, right? So, uh, yeah. So she's going to hit. And I'm going to put a, a marker on this thing. So he's got 19 hit points. Oh, no, wait. It's about 19. So 19 is like plus 14. I know it's kind of weird right here. And then I'm going to subtract 4. I, I don't know why I did like that, but just just go with it, right? So she whacked this thing on the nose, and it did not like that whatsoever, right? Um, now we're going to roll for initiative, and this thing, if it gets an attack, it's probably going to be, it's bottlenecked, right? Because Itaz is in the way, and she's going to prevent this from going after the 
the people clad in metal here. So they're all striking up torches. They won't be able to attack if they do win the initiative. Um, they're going to kind of run here with torches and try to burn this thing, or not to burn it. Well, just kind of keep it away. I don't think it. I don't think it means any harm, but you know, whatever. So this is the adventurers. They roll a five. And a monster, he's kind of just been uh, whacked in the nose by Itez so bad that it's now backed up. And it's like, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like shaking a little bit. It's not really, really, really um, wasn't expecting to get clobbered by uh, a female wizard. But sure enough, that's how these things go. So this round, of course, like I said, Itaz is going to try to make another strike because um, she has the initiative round. So she is going to come down and clock in. Right, so really quick, she's gonna hit with her staff again. That would be a definite miss, okay? So now the uh, the rust monster, right, is now going to try to strike her. So it's a four hit dice monster and she, it might do her damage. Mm. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah, Itaz just got um, bit with that big beak because that's what those things do, right? So a minus three, okay? So it's, it's mad, it's kind of, it's hungry, it's mad, it's coming for you. It smells that beautiful silver metal everywhere. It's what the chomp, right? Well, this time the, uh, the party has lit up their stuff. So let's do an initiative round now because I have to restart this thing because things are really kind of weird. Uh, monster, I mean, adventurers roll a two, monsters roll a six. So it is charging, it is ready to go. Once again, Itaz is going to block the way with the staff best she can because doesn't trust this thing so she's going head on now you could do uh long story short she could take an action and um she could also i don't think she'll burn a potion of invisibility so this might have been stupid to even bring up so let's just let's just have her swing in i mean this seems like she's not outnumbered or something so um yeah she's gonna just go for a straight down smash that's a miss, though. Armor class is 16 on this thing, so uh, she's going to miss with that one, right? And these guys are going to push up. I think I'm going to have uh, uh, Stamick. Yes, yeah, make Stamick come up. He's got the torch, and he's going to try to shove the thing in the thing's face at this point, uh, trying to keep it away. So if he does a strike, he's going to do burn damage, right, which is 1d6 with the thing, trying to keep it off. This thing can still try to make a swipe. It does make an attack. It's going to start tearing up his armor. Huh, okay, all right. So uh, I'm just going to have to do um, all his things have bonuses on there. So I'm just going to make a new, a new thing for him. I'm just going to call it torch. He's going to swing the torch. It should be a blind roll. I guess he could give a plus one because of his strength. Right? Is he have a plus two? Yeah, he does, I think, right? What's his strength? 17. Okay, he's going to have a plus two on this. So he's going to try to jam this thing down on the thing's head. Try to scorch it in the face, right? Okay, let's see what happens. Torch, 18. Oh my God. Yeah, okay, so he he jams this thing right into the eyes of the of the, of the thing, doing some massive damage. Full damage? Really? Wow, with the torch. Well, he is not screwing around. I guess he's scared of his stuff rusting out. So at this point, this thing's going to go down fairly low. I, I'm going to see if this thing's going to make a run for it. I mean, obviously, he took a lot of blows and it's just hungry but it's not i don't think it's gonna die for a meal right so once again we're gonna do the up and down thing that i love so much so one two three he runs away four five six he's hungry he's eating one two three he runs away that's it this thing's gonna start scampering get the hell out of the way right um kind of like a giant armadillo comes running off into the distance and it's going to try to get away from here. And I'll say it goes down into here or something like this. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, they, whew, okay. Well, that was good. Let's get rid of that. So, uh, everyone a, has a torch lift, right? So, they're going to come back down here. Um, so, so what ITAS is going to do is going to take her wand. And obviously, she, she holds it in a way. She kind of affixes it to her staff. So, she can hold the wand with one hand and the staff's on the other side. So, I mean, the wand is on the other side of the staff. So, it... And emanates like that way. So she can actually, it's kind of like a flashlight on a stick, maybe. I don't know. Uh, she's pretty smart. She would do something like that. Um, they're going to now venture forth. They're going to obviously extinguish their torches. They're not going to burn them all out. It's a waste. But definitely going to, actually, let's keep them lit. 
<laughs> he might come back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's see if he comes back. I'll roll for that. But anyways, Timmons is still taking the lead. He's got his torch out now. They're looking for that rust monster because they think he's going to jump out and start chewing on that metal. Uh, I think I think ITAS would have to go up here second. We don't trust this thing. Timmons is going to go first because he's a sneaky little jerk and he can see things. So he's going to stealth his way up to room number 16. So here we go, right? So... Timmons, Mr. Timmons, you are now going to uh, roll for a stealth check, and he is going to see whether or not he's going to be noticed. He's not. As small as he is, he kind of comes walking here, but I don't think it really matters what I roll that. He's got a torch in his hand. Probably be seen. Can't hide in the shadows. I'm going to come here. They're obviously looking for this rust monster. Yeah, I don't know. I just said thank you. So they're in this room. So it's in 16. Okay, it is the rest. See what's going on here. Floor is covered with tattered, dirty mats of cloth and straw. They may have been roll bed rolls or sleep bags at some point, but they have long since been ruined. Sleeping chamber, the war rats who dwell here. There's only one war rat. No, he's in rat form. Four giant rats are also hiding in the bed rolls. What these are Ah, uh, okay. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna do. We're just gonna burn this place. What do we care, right? Ah, uh, but there's treasure in there. Mm, I don't care. Burn it. Let me trust it. Let's burn the hell out of it. Okay, so so obviously they walk in, they see all this tattered and torn up stuff all the way through here. It kind of goes everywhere. So um, uh, who's got the oil? I think our friend, yeah, we got to extinguish this evil before it destroys any people in the town. I think Itaz has the torch of the six pints of oil, right? So let's do this. Let's uh, Itaz. ITAS is going to give out uh, two of her points of oil, so we're going to drop this down, right? So this points of oil. Maybe I should just go back here. I went the wrong way. Did I? Pints of oil. She has six of them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know why I did that because I'm going to take three of them off, right? And we're going to start slathering everything with oil because we're going to burn this place because it looks like a nesting ground. Clearly, that's what it is, right? So. We don't want any part of this. And obviously it's filled with disease and pestilence. So we just want that gone, right? So ITAS gives out three of them. So these three guys are standing out here. She's going to guard this way in case Mr. Uh, Rust Monster comes. She can more or whack on the nose. They start dousing this thing all the way around. Timmons, of course, will probably take the lead because he's the most noisy, nosy of all of them. Let's see if he notices this thing down here in the back. He does see the stairs. He's going to come down here. See if he notices this back passage. One, two, three, he surely does. Four, five, six, he doesn't. So one, two, three, he notices. Yes, he does notice this back passage. So he's going to come back here and, and take a look inside. And when he does, he's going to look at a room 17. Um, oh, well, is someone supposed to jump out and kind of go at us right now, aren't we? Control rats, he has to look at three. Okay, well. Do we have it done with Count 3? If they're attacking with a weapon, it would count. I don't know, Earthing Chamber. There's a bunch of little rats and stuff in here. Oh, yeah, okay, well, hell, okay. He's going to yell back, oh, my God, look out. Uh, the, you guys, there's tons of them back here. So they're going to pull out the other ones. At this point in time, the giant rats, when they start dousing the thing, they're going to start, like, uh, uh, attacking the party members. So we have four, three, two, two, and they have our close 12. And they got one war rat still here, right? So... This is our this is our play. So we got four, three, two, two. So let's let's put some guys on the field and let's see how this works out, right? Get us back so I can get my men. Four, three, two, two. So I got four of these guys. Three, four. I'm gonna take Rusty back up and I'm gonna put number nine as being once again the wear rat. Okay. And this is going to be bad. They would not. Okay, one, two, three, four. These are rats going to be jumping out. One, two, three, four. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put hit points on all these things. And this is the war rats probably going to go straight up against Ellis at this point. So uh, looking at their hit points, four, three, two, two. And this one's got three hit dice. I don't know. Let's see what it says. Let's do a three hit dice roll, monster roll, three hit dice. Let's see how many hit points it said. Usually they give them 15. Okay, it's got 15 hit points. That's cool. So nine, let's put 15 plus 
uh, 13. He's got 15 hit points. This is plus three, plus three, and make this plus two. I'm just grabbing things randomly. This would be uh, five. wrong, minus five. And uh, let's see what this one is. That's it, plus two. And this guy, I hate it when it does that. Okay. Plus, oh wait, plus two. So if we do this right, this is this is four. This is two. Good. This is two. This is three. And this is the wear rat. Okay, cool. Nice. All right, I'm going to blow back in, take a look at what's going on here. Boom, 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 boom. Tim is just going to come running up this way. Clearly, they uh, he might be able to jank that guy from behind, that rat from behind, because he's going to do a sneak attack or maybe the more rat, but let's see what happens. Okay, so they're gonna go ahead and engage this thing. Uh, I'm gonna give them the opportunity of surprise, okay? So the war rat's gonna attack first. It's a three hit dice monster because they kind of did a surprise attack on them. Um, where's my monster sheet? I just closed it. Ugh, that was not smart, it was back. All right, here's my monster attack sheet. Okay, cool, all right? So if you ever play Roll20, and if you wanna know what I'm doing here, it's a really kind of cool trick I did. I, I do this even when I'm playing with um, everybody else, let's say other people. I um, I do this thing where I make something called a monster sheet. I, I'm sure people have probably showed this, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So uh, this is kind of cool. If I could find the sheet, maybe I could close all these things. Initiative Tim and Stanwick can't find my sheet to show you. I can't find the sheet. I guess I got too much stuff open. Hmm. Maybe I should close all the. Oh my God, I have all these things open down here. I'm sorry. I, I am delaying you from the action. And I apologize for this. I got to close this so I can find it on the Zoom. So I'm recording this on Zoom. Let's see this thing. All right, so let's take a look at this. This, this should be closed. I don't need this open. Oh, come on. Why are you being like that? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. All this to show you something that you might find useful. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Save it. Fine. Okay. Great. Here's my monster attack sheet. Okay. Where is it on this thing? Okay. Maybe I'm not going to show you. It looks like I'm in some trouble here. Wait. Cancel. So let's try a new share. Let's see if it's up now. I test. I am like amazed that sometimes things show up. And sometimes they don't. So I guess I'm not going to show you the monster attack sheet. I'm so sorry. I just wasted your time and, of course, mine and ruined the flow of the action. But I will kind of maybe put it up on website so you can take a look what it looks like. So we're going to hit. Um, this, of course, is going to be the uh, where rat going after Ellis. Boom. And it's a miss. Thank God for that because... Yeah, I don't want the lycanthropy. Right now, every time you hit it with a weapon, you're not going to get lycanthropy, but I think if they dine on your body, you're going to get it. I don't see how else. It's like weird. You have weapons. You think that that would be the reason how you would get it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I see. I didn't pop it out. There you go. Okay, here. Let me show you what I got here. God, I figured out what I did wrong. So what I do is I just have a sheet called Monster Attack, and I just do this. One hit dice monster, da, da, da. Two hit dice three hit dice, four hit dice, five hit dice. It's, it makes it easier. And I guess I can put like initiative down here, but I have a different sheet and I'll show you what that looks like for initiative. This makes it sort of easier when you're playing, especially with a group. It comes down to do monster attacks instead of typing it in every time. This is what I like to do. Um, the other one is my other new share. Let's see if I show the initiative sheet. And once again, you're just trying to find a way you could play on roll 20 in a way that's super easy, okay? Right, sure, that's one. So let's take a look at the initiative. It says adventurers, monster, and here's my choice. I just roll these things and that's gonna help me with the, those things that are gonna pop up throughout the entire game. So that's kind of cool, right? So you got that going on, right? So this has been a helpful thing for you. So he got missed. And so now I'm gonna just do these guys in order, okay? I'm gonna have one and two, charge. 
one, two, three, or four are going to go after Stanwyck. Obviously, he's sitting right there. It's two on him. So all these things, one, two, three, they're all rats. They're one hit dice rats, and they're all going to be attacking poor Stanwyck, just sitting there. And here it comes. Ready? One, two. Oh, that sucks so bad. Okay, I'll go back. Two, three, four. So clearly, he has been bitten. Um, Let's, let's roll 1d20. I'm going to roll 1d20. If it's a 1, he's going to catch some disease. Oh, he does not catch a disease. So that was, I just pushed a monster attack thing, which is 1d20 plus 1. So if it would have came up a 2, that would have been a 1. That would have said he got a disease. So anyways, uh, 5 hit points of damage on poor Stanwyck. That sucks, buddy. We didn't know that was going to happen, did you? All right, minus 5. So the rats are jumping and biting on him. That is some horrid situation, right? But that means now it is the, uh, he's gonna take the backstab on that guy because he didn't move. Um, I guess he didn't see him go by, doesn't remember him being there. I don't know. This'll be fun, all right? So I'm gonna look at this thing. So the rats themselves are hit dice one minus one. That's funny, okay, that's funny. So let's go ahead, she's gonna come up, she's gonna engage, uh, and this one's fighting straight on. So first one in the order is gonna be the backstab. Backstab with the plus one sword from behind uh, my good old friend, Mr. Timmonson. So Mr. Timmonson, he is going to have some fun with this thing. Stab. So I'm going to add a plus four, one plus two, plus two, four. And this is going to be plus two because he's going behind with the backstab. Yes, this is going to be a mess. Let's see if he can do this thing. He is going to jump on the were rat from behind. <laughs> it was a good opportunity to do some amazing stuff and you didn't do it that's okay that's okay timmins that's all right yes because this ever class was 13 god just missed it sorry that'd have been awesome that's too bad stanwick let's go ahead and crush number two because he's standing right there let's do this buddy um can't have this going on so stanwick's going to go ahead and uh come down hard with its longsword with the, and this is with the rat so it's just plus one yes so he's going to clobber. He's going to take out that first one because he rolled that one for how big was this? Doesn't matter. I don't think any of them were over five. So we're going to take him out. Boom. Bye bye. All right. So uh, I'm going to put him over here in this thing because we're going to have to take a look at him. So the next one is uh, Itaz. Itaz is going to come in and she's going to clobber the, the be crap out of uh, number four. So Itaz swinging as hard as she can with her staff, kind of clocking this thing in. Boom. Yes! So I test, boy, she all fired today. All right, young lady, that's a nice way to go. So she took that one out, right? So now it's Ellis. Ellis is on that were rat. She's got the mace and it's been silvered so she can actually do some damage on this thing. Uh, wrong character, wait. So she is now going to come down and smash hard with the mace. And she misses because breaking my heart, that's what she does, right? So uh, we're gonna go back into our initiative round. So we're gonna roll this back and forth. So, uh, adventures, I have a four and the, they got a three. So the adventures get to go again another round, okay? Uh, Tim still has a plus two on his roll because he'd be flanking from behind because Ellis is straight on. So Tim is, I'm gonna roll for you. And when you roll, he uh, gets a plus two on top of whatever this is. Dang, yes. So that's gonna be a plus two to hit, but he gets a plus two to damage, so minus six. All right, Stanwick, you're going to clobber at number one, right? So he's targeting that one. And, of course, it's a rat, so it should be too bad, but let's see what happens here. Yes, okay, that rat is rat meat. It's everywhere. Comes down, cleaving hard with this sword. He is taken out. No longer there. Itaz, coming down hard with the staff once again. She's doing, like, this rat stomp. So whatever she's doing, she's smacking as hard as she can with that staff. Once again, yes! God, she is what? She is in everything. I don't know. That's just going crazy. Ellis, with your big old fantastic mace, please don't screw around here. Hit this thing. Got its eye. Yo, yes. Okay, good job. Now to six hit points. Okay, so now it's this thing's turn. Obviously, it can't really run anywhere. We got this thing surrounded. I mean, if it tried to run, we're gonna 
goodness, we've got it from behind. Let's just, uh, what's it going to do? I don't think it do anything. It's actually protecting the nest back here. Can it, it can't get away. Technically, I would say it needs a morale check, but oh, maybe it's going to try to bite. Try to bite Ellis. Let's, let's poison Ellis with lycanthropy. So it's going to drop its weapon and go for a bite right now. At this point, the weapon is not working well anyway, so it's a four hit dice, three hit dice monster going for a bite. Yes. Nice. That's how that works. So now we're going to do initiative. I know I'm doing initiative every round. I'm doing this because I think this is our last, last ditty, our last battle. So we're going to do this one, giving her the benefit of the doubt. Oh, okay, good. So the rat's going to make another bite, this time at Ellis again. Um, so we'll see how this works. So for, it's a does that hit Ellis? Oh God, I hope not. Ellis, what's your armor class? Oh no, her armor class is like 17. Nah, she's fine. You chew on that all the time. You're just chewing on a metal sleeve. That's doing nothing. All right, let's take it out. Timmins, you get a plus two from behind. This thing's attacking pretty bad. Timmins doesn't care. It's got a sword. He's going to do what he does best. <laughs> Timmins just turns around when he's trying to chew on the armor. A uh, poor Ellis, she's trying to fling this thing off, and she's like, oh my god, there's a rat on me, oh my god. So, so then all of a sudden, uh, Timmons with this plus one sword does this really alley-oop thing, swings up from the bottom and just and cuts the head off this rat. It just falls to the ground, and it dies. It's eight, I think, is more than what it had left, right? Oh yeah, so it's, it's dead, nice. And then they turn around and they say, well, it looks like we've killed everything here. Let's search this place real quick and let's torch it. And he says, well, there's a bunch of rats in this back room, this is fine. Give me a couple more pints of oil. So Timmons is like, gonna go down here and start like throwing the canisters of oil down into this room, getting ready to burn this thing because it's just disgusting. They gotta search the room, and of course, in searching the room, they find a uh, mace plus one, leather armor plus one, a scroll called Bless. So uh, I'm gonna load these guys up with their new stuff, but uh, for right now, um, we're gonna try to see what's gonna happen here. So, so, so Timmons, I'm gonna share this out with you a little bit. Timmons. He's going to get leather plus one. Oh, good for him. And I'm going to put plus one. Uh, this was totally worth it because he's a, an amazing little adventurer. All right, cool. And um, that would make the guy happy, right? Um, there's a scroll called Bless, and that would definitely have to go to uh, Ellis because that is a clerical thing, right? So let's see what Ellis has. He also is going to get a mace. Plus one silver. Oh, it's already there. Pretty good. Now she's going to have two bases. I could get the first one. Ah, keep it. I guess it gets the other one gets eaten, right? All right, plus one. We're just going to put that there. And obviously, uh, her strength is what? 15. Well, this should have been more. Oh, no, that's not Yeah, it is. I have changed it. That's one plus two. And this one should be plus two. I'll do the same thing here. Uh, plus two. And this one's plus two. So in case something gets lost, she has a backup. Okay. I'm going to stick that in your backpack for later on for use. Nice. And there's a scroll less. Scroll. Okay. Scroll. <laughs> scroll less. Okay. Nice. So uh, they picked all this stuff up in this room. And they are going to oh, 156 gold pieces. So we're going to stick that. That's going to have Ellis's backpack too, as well, because Ellis uh, is in charge of plus 156. And what was that last thing you had? Uh, 26 gold pieces. So looking at that, Ellis is going to get 26 gold Okay, nice. They do have a bag of holding and. Uh, they got a sack with the head of the Frat King in their bag holder. I think they're going to go to stuff later. So I just want to make sure I logged it all in. That's what I would do. So at this point in time, they start like torching the, torching the premises. It all starts burning. And they're going to, oh yeah, it's all gross and disgusting. They're going to get the heck out of there now because they don't want to fix it. It's like, let's get out of here. Right? So they're going to start running. So, Come on, Timmons, get out of there. So Timmons is coming out. Itaz is leading the way. We got this light stuff. So obviously having the map is letting is going on. Okay, so we're not going to climb back up that well. Don't we know how to get out of here? Yeah, we do. Right, so we're going to try to figure this out. Um, 
we're gonna go that way. We're not going that way. We're getting out of here. Okay, there we go. It's all the way up here. So, uh, kind of like finishing out this journey is I'm gonna be a, a little on the overtime here. I, I don't like to make them past 30 minutes. I'm almost to 38 minutes here. I'm going to uh, basically sum up that they went back to town, dropped the right head to God down. Everybody was like, hey, they clap. They, they get their 500 gold pieces and they do have a map to the next module, which will take me to the next thing. Okay, there's a couple of things I just want to talk about when you're doing solo play, especially on roll 20. Number one, the uh, the markers I'm using up here in the corner right here make this essentially very, very easy. For my, you're not gonna drop a cobalt looking marker around this. It's too much to do. Just having them illuminate, drop them in, that makes it really kind of, because you're, you're looking for efficiency, okay? Uh, the second thing is the extra pages that I'm showing you that I'm putting on, like a monster attack page, and then I have a page for initiative. Uh, Running like a 5e scenario with this stuff, uh, there's all those extra things you get would make it immensely difficult, okay? Um, I think to play a character, OSR is like the characters are small and you know, I still, in my mind, Timmons has a personality as much as Itaz or Stanwyck, even Ellis. It's a matter, personality is something that comes out in the play. In fact, when I do OSR, much my thoughts on it, it's the fact that I, I think your character grows and becomes something. It's not like they should be something and then they do something. That's just, I guess that's the way I grew up in the 80s. That's you know, the kind of way it went happen, right? So a lot of people have these giant backstories. These guys have no backstory. They're just dudes. And then they came in now, their backstory is going to be their accomplishment. We had the word where I came from. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my thing. It doesn't have to be your thing. It's just my thing. And that's kind of how I, I more or less run it. Um, the other thing too is like, I found out, usually when I'm playing by myself, I'm, I'm not saying anything out loud. I'm saying it all in my head, you're kind of playing it. it. And some people might think this is weird, why are you doing this? I said, you can watch a movie by yourself or play a video game by yourself. And no one's questioned that otherwise, right? I'm playing a game I like by myself and in narrating it, and obviously I'm, I'm actually uh, logging this chronologically, the whole expedition. I can go back and look at it another day and I actually watched some of it last night. I watched the other videos I'm putting out. It's nice to go back and reflect on how I did things. And as a game master, this is the important thing, as a game master, you're going to have scenarios where you're like, how would you play this out? And what's fun doing this is I'll have something to pull from. Like a, a one, two, three, four, five, six. I love the one, two, three, four, five, six rules of side dice for making decisions on things. And obviously I'm making the character decisions. I have things happen to, pay, uh, to a lot of players. I say, uh, oh my God, something happened. I go, one, two, three is bad, four, five, six is worse. I do that all the time. And it just lets them know that I'm giving them the less of, lesser of two bad things out there that could possibly happen. With that, if you were to play like, like if I had my things, like to say I was setting up like a normal, I show another solo design where I actually did it live, but I didn't really play it out. I don't have a good camera. I don't, so I can't like sit a camera up on a tripod and you can watch me do it. I would do this the same way. It actually would probably move about the same speed, actually probably a little quicker because the note cards make it easier. But in all reality, and, and playing it this way, you have to, if you're playing it by yourself, I, I, I'm definitely going to be talking out loud when I play it from now on. And, and actually pretending like there's an audience there. I know it sounds really psychotic when you think about it, but in a way, um, it Putting it outside vocalizes the narrative. And vocalizing the narrative, it's exciting. It's actually kind of fun. I, I'm looking back and nobody's actually watching. I think like one person that's watched is probably my wife. She's awesome. But no one's like, it doesn't matter. I still had fun. I had so much fun doing this over the last couple of days. I, I guess I started like on Wednesday and I finished today because yesterday I put my uh, duo D and D thing together. So these are just some words for those. Anybody out there, you can't play. It's a pandemic. It's you're, you're in quarantine lockdown you're not going out and you win a game you know go on roll 20 it's a, starting things easy you just stick a map up put some characters down you grab yourself the chintzy little dyson logos has all these fun maps just make a couple easy osr characters all the stuff's online have yourself some fun I, act like you know because even if you hook up like i've been playing with four or five people in a group it, it tends to go really really slow and sometimes you're kind of like, this is why I don't like Roll20. It's boring and people are sitting around. And I remember I have a friend that got up and started washing dishes in the middle of it because, you know, what? It's, so I could see that how it, from, a, from a user point of view, it's not as fun. It's always more fun, I think, for the DM because they're doing more things. So, and this might get a really nice try for you to actually record 
and, and look back at things. I, I'm recording using Zoom, so I can take a look at it. And as a teacher, I've been using it since the quarantine. So I'm kind of well-versed on how it works, and you got to work with your volumes and things. And hopefully, in this whole thing, you got something out of it. And I, I had fun. And if you had fun, eh, awesome. It's a bonus, okay? So with that, I want you to have an excellent time. I, and uh, I really do appreciate you tuning in and checking this out, all right? Without further ado, you guys have an excellent rest of your day. All right, bye.